that's what we have uh, learned. Various rules. It's all about rules. A junction rule. A manifestation of a law of consideration of charge when current travels and splits. <clears throat> of course, the total number of charge doesn't change. And uh, uh, rules for resistors connected in parallel or in series. And the Ohm's law, which describes how electric current through a resistor is related to the resistance and potential difference. And uh, the question is related to the circuit. The schematic uh, is here. And uh, this symbol represents the battery. This symbol represents the capacitor. This symbol represents a bulb. This symbol represents a switch. Right now, this switch is open. An open switch has infinite resistance. Electrons cannot jump across. So right now, there is nothing happening in it. But if I close the switch, something should start happening. The question is what? So these are answers. Maybe zoom out a little. Yeah. So you should uh, read before I block it. Because right now I'm blocking it and you can't read it. <clears throat> so I'm going to be move left, right. So, And uh, to create a circuit, we have to use wires. And uh, usually. We start from a battery. That's a plus. Now I need to, to connect it to a switch. People used to call this thing a switch, but technically that's a key, Morse key. You don't know what that means? SOS, which is a song. You know which group? ABBA. 30 years ago, you don't know that. So <clears throat> just connecting everything with wires. And uh, this is a capacitor. I'll tell you what this device is. It just shows that right now nothing is happening when electric current starts traveling, we can see these red dots moving. That's it. It's good visualization, visualization tool. And uh, well, the switch is open, so I can connect. And uh, when I close the switch, we should start observing electric current. So I'm going to wait a little bit longer. What should start happening? Well, the best way is to, I'm going to switch back for the moment, is to just draw a closed switch. And uh, what should start happening? Well. This is a positive end electrode of a battery. This is a negative. And as we know very well, uh, a fictional positive charges would start traveling away from a positive electrode. And uh, what would be happening on another side? Well, battery is acting like a pump, so it starts moving electrons. 
So electric current would be like this. If there is electric current, the bulb should lighten up. The question is, for how long? And uh, let's see. This is a very rare occasion in physics where we actually need to think a little bit because uh, it's not related to just repeating something we've done in the past. It's related to uh, like connecting the dots between different pieces of information we've learned. So that requires some thinking. And uh, thinking <coughs> is a good thing because it's like an exercise for a brain, right? Like a, so this whole course is like fitness for your brain. Mine too. And uh, some people like fitness, some hate. So, <clears throat> number three. Number three. And uh, let's just see. <clears throat> now, if you really put some effort into thinking, it doesn't matter if your answer is right or wrong, because you're excited, your brain cells, and the, the, <clears throat> um, that action on, it, on its own helps to uh, intensify learning process. If you just randomly pick the number, that means you didn't help yourself and if you don't help yourself, that means you don't like yourself and you're punishing yourself for something. I don't know what that's outside of this course. So <clears throat> let's see what's going to happen. Where is the bulb? That's the bulb. It is on. So what's happening? Electrons running. How should electron run? Uh, actual physical electrons should run away from a negative electrode, so they should travel this way, then this way, travel this way, run, travel this way, this way. When we close the switch, the switch now is like a wire, has no resistance, so, and the electrons keep travel this way. So what, what do we see here is not a direction of electrons. What we see here is the direction of those physical, uh, fictional positive charges they would have been traveling in that direction. That is actually a direction of electric current. What happened to the bulb? What happened to the bulb? So if you said it will remain on forever until we open the switch, your answer was what? wrong. What you didn't take into account, that capacitor has a fixed maximum value it can, of a charge it can store as long as the charge. See, it's getting slower and slower and slower and slower. Because the more electrons it has, the harder new electrons to get in. That's it. Eventually, it will stop. We still observe some electric current, but that electric current is not enough already to make this bulb bright. It is too low, and eventually it will become zero. <clears throat> so the right answer is four. But if instead of a capacitor, if instead of a capacitor, we would use just a wire or just a regular resistor, with the same bulb, and we close the switch. In that case, in that case, electric current would travel well, technically forever, or until the battery would die. Nothing is eternal in this world. Eventually, everything dies, as we know. And uh, 
this is an example when we used information from different parts of physics, something about capacitors, something about the new topic, electric current. And uh, now we can <coughs> go back for the moment and talk about why capacitors connected in series should have the same charge. She doesn't move anymore. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you for asking. Bless you. So what do we need to do to answer that question? We have to open the switch, take the battery out of the circuit. Close the circuit again, and now close the switch. What is happening? Exactly what you said. The capacitor has stored the energy, but now it's releasing energy back. We don't really need the battery, but what is the difference between the capacitor and the battery? The capacitor, well, see, it's dimmer and dimmer. Eventually, it will become dark again. So the capacitor has a fixed amount of energy. When it's gone, it's gone. We have to charge it again. The battery, on the other hand, can provide fixed value of voltage for a very long time. That's it. It has well something inside which makes voltage across these two electrodes fixed, no matter what's happening outside. Again, we can see that electric current now, first of all, travels in the opposite direction, plus uh, slows down and eventually electric current dies again. <clears throat> but we can connect the battery again, recharge it, and we could do it again and again if we wanted to. Where does energy come from? From the battery. The battery does work on charges. Those charges get stored in the capacitor. The capacitor has energy. If we remove the battery, the capacitor loses that energy. And the electric current does work. We'll talk about it soon. And that work, well, was even visible for a while. The uh, electric current was strong enough, high enough, to lighten up the filament. What did it mean? It, mean, it, it meant that uh, the energy stored in the capacitor eventually was transferred into the optical energy, into light, into the photons. And those photons traveling away hit an eye, excite the retina, you know, the neural pulse goes to some places, and that's what we call vision. Well, there's another type of vision when people can predict future. That's outside of this course. <clears throat> so, and now, uh, Well, actually, probably we don't need it anymore. Yep, don't move anymore. No electric current. <clears throat> now, this is what we've talked about before. We know that if we have, we have a conductor, a conductor, can only have the same potential on the surface and inside. There is no electric field inside. Electric field on the surface is perpendicular to it. We know that uh, if we have a large plate with a charge on it, it generates a uniform electric field. So, and now we can <coughs> use this for a simple model. The general ex uh, explanation requires some calculus, but a simple model helps to understand what is it about. It's about a single word, equilibrium. 
in equilibrium charges electrons should move anymore they might wiggle a little bit due to temperature but in general they should not move anymore why does it happen well first of all <clears throat> because of the resistance every conductor has a resistance in, because it has atoms without resistance those electrons couldn't ever stop we didn't mention anything about the resistance before we meant it but now we know when electrons travel through a conductor they collide with atoms and eventually they have to give away all the energy that's the only way the equilibrium can be reached due to resistance without resistance they would be moving back and forth infinitely long like a superconductor does actually but now let's say you have two capacitors let's make them different and you attach a battery let's say like this what's going to happen <clears throat> well first this will become positive char positively charged because what because electrons electrons like make them blue will be collected here but the law of conservation of charge tells us that the amount of electrons left the positive plate should be equal to the amount of the electrons brought to the negative plate that's normal conservation of charge what's happening here this is a conductor conductive plate conductive wire conductive plate so <clears throat> these positive charges will attract electrons those will repel electrons and of course they will move so we should have electrons here deficiency of electrons here so that should be some kind of positive charge Q plus star that should be some negative charge negative charge Q the question is why should they be equal to each other why this is equal to this that's what the real question about and uh, well <clears throat> you see we have we have solved the problem about electric field generated by a single plate let's say these two charges are different in that case we should have electric oh, let's make it red electric field electric field like this but we also should have electric field like this two plates like exactly like we did before and if charges not equal to each other net electric field outside would not be equal to zero if net electric field is not zero it acts on electrons electrons moving not equilibrium that's it eventually they should lose all the energy eventually they should stop moving and that means electric field outside should be equal to zero that means those two charges must be equal to, to zero the key word is equilibrium that's how I spell it and again this is a situation very common in physics <clears throat> at first we talked about it I, I remember what I told you I told you when electron moved over there it pushes one electron away then second electron moves it pushes second electron away. it's not a proof of course it's a, a mental trick to help us to remember that charge should be the same this is more like a proof it's a simple model but it tells us the general idea why the charges should be the same any questions so we we, we had to go back yeah. to use the new material to better understand the previous material this back and forth in physics happens all the time all the time so every time when we talk about something it's never the full truth there's something more about that it's like in politics
but politicians lie on purpose. Physicists never lie about physics. <clears throat> well, now we're going to talk about batteries one last time. We know what it does. The mission of the battery, well, we know the mission of human beings is to bring order, fight entropy. The mission of battery is bring fixed amount of potential difference. That's it. How does it do it? Well, every battery has inside many, many tiny demons. We call them chemicals. And that's it. There's some special type of chemical reactions which separate the charge. And we always have some extra electrons close to the negative terminal. And of course, deficiency of electrons close to the positive. If we connect uh, some wires, conductive wires to the battery, those electrons will be able to escape. They start moving. But those demons, chemical reactions, will bring more. That's it. Until they die. Because as we know, everything dies. And uh, <clears throat> the simplest circuit should have at least one battery and at least one resistor. And uh, again, whether we like it or not, we have to know the slang. The battery has a name, the active element of a circuit. Any device, bulb, uh, projector, motor, any device which uses that electric current to do something has a name a passive, passive element. And uh, outside of the battery, electric current through the passive element always travels through high potential to low potential. But now, when the circuit is complete inside the battery, this rule actually doesn't work anymore. <clears throat> inside the battery, electric current travels from low potential to high potential. Why? Well, demons. Maybe angels, I don't know. <clears throat> Chemical reactions. What? Anyway, uh, of course, you can find uh, a lot of helpful analogies online. This is one of those analogies which I personally also like. <clears throat> the battery is like a ski lift, you know. And uh, that fictional positive charge is like a skier. To get up the hill, you, it has to be some kind of a special work done on it. And then from the hill down the ground, it just slides on its own. And then again, up, some work has to be done on it, and then on its own. And that amount of work which a battery does Perculum has a name, EMF. Well, people used to call it electromotive force because they thought it was some kind of a mechanical force which leads to electricity. Now we know it, it's not that what's happening. So the name is outdated. People just use letters EMF or a Greek letter, Ypsilon. And we know that's supposed to be equal to that fixed voltage provided by the battery. An actual uh, battery, of course, has internal resistance. We neglect that fact. Like actual wire also should have some resistance. We have measured. But it's so tiny, we neglect that. So for us, the battery doesn't have any resistance. Wires don't have any resistance. If we have any resistance, it's here in the device, in the passive element. And uh, see what the difference between the passive element and the active element. The active element, the battery, produces fixed amount of voltage. Now we call it EMF. The passive element doesn't produce anything. If you want to produce something, you should be active. That's the rule. 
Now, <clears throat> if we apply the Ohm's law, the Ohm's law cannot be applied to the battery. The Ohm's law only can be applied to any passive element, which means to a resistor, to a bulb, but also to a wire. A, a, a wire is not a battery. So we can apply Ohm's law to anything which is not a battery. But if wire doesn't have a resistance, R equals zero, there is no resistance, which means there is no potential difference. So an ideal wire doesn't change electric potential. That's it. Where electric potential changes here from high to low. We say potential drops. Sometimes, so potential drop, potential rise, these are just, again, different names for voltage. That's it. So please, uh, tell me what you think. So we have a simplest circuit with one active element, battery, one passive element, some kind of a resistor. The battery has EMF, fixed voltage, six volts. Now, <clears throat> we always assume that there is one, in any circuit, there is one point which is grounded. And grounded doesn't mean doesn't go anywhere. Grounded means connected to the earth, which means electric potential of that point is zero. We ground, yeah. So we choose where it's zero. And of course, normally, the easiest choice at the negative electrode of the battery. So this potential is zero. And battery, the battery, makes potential here 6 volts higher. And uh, If we want to use the Ohm's law, it has to be applied to the passive element, to the, to the resistor. And to apply that law, we need to know the voltage across the resistor. We need to know this voltage. So we need to be able to, be able to make a transition from this to that. Sure, we says. Uh, so you, you, you see, <coughs> your brain is a powerful pattern recognition device. So if you think uh, the answer is one, you choose one. The answer is two volts, you choose two. The answer is three volts, you choose three, right? Et cetera, et cetera. And uh, what did you say? That should be question three, so I have to move. One question down. One question down, which is six. I don't think I'm not going to say anything. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 27 ends here. So these people didn't say anything yet. See, I see 27 answers. I definitely see more people. So just choose any number. Question three, enter it, select it. I was always wondering, can I answer the question? That's much better. Still the same answer, six, and of course it is six. <clears throat> no doubt about that. So, uh, because wire has no resistance, as we just said, it doesn't change potential. Electric potential along a wire remains constant. So if it is six volts here, 
it should be 6 volts here due to this law. A wire has no resistance, hence a wire doesn't change potential. But <clears throat> how would we measure the potential? Well, let's take a quick look. So we have, we have to measure Depending on the situation, we have to measure oops, electric current, electric resistance. Normally, we don't measure electric resistance directly. We usually measure electric current and the voltage. We cannot measure just the potential. We can measure only electric potential relative to a specific reference point. So what do we need is a circuit. And wiring circuits is a, well, one of human practice practices which requires some practice. So the easiest circuit, I want to use a bulb. The easiest circuit, simplest one, has two elements, one active, one passive. Don't really need the switch, just can connect directly. It's on. And now let's say I want to measure voltage. As we know, there's always the reference point, that's what uh, we call zero potential. And uh, to measure voltage, we need to, to measure potential difference. And uh, to measure potential difference, we just have to connect the multimeter to two different, oops, it's temperature. two different points in a circuit. That's why we call it voltage across, kind of. We measure potential difference between these two points. Well, <clears throat> if I want to measure, so you see, I don't break the circuit, I just connect the multimeter to two different points in a circuit. What do I do if I want to measure electric current? Well, first of all, I need a different device. This one doesn't measure current. How do I know? It says, does not measure current. <laughs> That's why we bought a new one. What is a current, electric current? What is it? It's a number of charges traveling per second. So if I want to measure electric current, I need to make sure electrons traveling through this device. There is another demon in it, which counts first, second, third, and then multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. That's how electric current is being measured. But in, in order to do that, we have to make sure electrons travel through. So we have to insert the emitter into the circuit. In that case, we have to break the circuit first. And then we have to complete it. Now, we can read the number, milliamps, and a minus, what does it mean? It, mean, it means that uh, if I switch these wires, it will be positive. That's what it really means. Uh, and when it is positive, it's positive when electric current goes into the red, 
and goes out from black. That's it. That's it. And if you know how to use these devices for a simple circuit, you know everything about these devices. The circuit might be more complicated, <coughs> and you still will be able to measure voltage, current. If you know voltage and current, you can calculate resistance using Ohm's law. And uh, for more complicated circuits, you can actually prove our relationships for uh, resistors connected in parallel, resistance, uh, resistors connected in series. So <coughs> this is how we measure voltage. Basically, it, it is measuring a potential relative to zero potential of our choice. This is how we measure electric current. Oh, well, it's coming back. It just takes, takes probably a long time. It has to be this one. Now it takes too long time. That's why I don't like this room. Since the installation, this room was acting funny. I would ask anybody who understands Russian to leave a room for five minutes and come back. This is for IT. You see? That's how you scare it. <clears throat> well, as we know, electric current does work. And we use it every day. For example, we use it right now, air conditioning, projector, computer. And uh, uh, to calculate the amount of work, we just have to apply the same equation we've used before. Electric charge travels through a certain amount of potential difference through certain voltage, charge times voltage, work done by electric field. The energy comes from the source. It could have been battery or maybe a power plant somewhere else. That energy is being transferred. Amount of energy, of course, is lost to environment, to heat. But still some amount left sufficient to be used. And uh, the reason for electrons doing work again is just colliding with atoms. When they collide with atoms, atoms start moving a little bit faster, more collision, faster motion. And we know that uh, temperature is just basically kinetic energy, kinetic energy, average kinetic energy of moving atoms. So <clears throat> when they move faster and faster and faster, energy goes higher and higher. If it's high enough, we can lighten up a filament in the bulb or do something else. And uh, if we <clears throat> Calculate the power. Power is work per second. So this is the standard expression for electric power. But if we use the Ohm's law, again, we can rewrite this expression using uh, the resistance and the current, or resistance and voltage. It depends on convenience, basically. And uh, <clears throat> now we can solve this problem. Uh, how much energy does the filament dissipate in 10 seconds? Well, electric power. So in this problem, we know all variables. We know uh, voltage, we know current, and we know resistance. So it doesn't really matter what equation we want to use. 
first, second, third, the result will be the same. So the uh, uh, fastest is just uh, electric current is 0.4. And as we know, we have two batteries. So that's going to be the power. Uh, three, one point two. A unit of a power is what? And the uh, the amount of energy or work done inside that filament should be equal to power times a time. Power times time. Uh, one point two times ten seconds. If we had minutes or hours, we would have to convert it into seconds. So 1.2 times 10, 12 joules. Now again, see what's happening? W, W. We need to know the difference, right? Here, it's a unit of power. What's here? We're calculating work done by well, electrons on the filament, inside the filament. Any questions? What should happen? So this bulb is on. We've seen it. What should happen to the brightness of this bulb if we remove one battery? What do you think? If, if, what do you think? And what will happen to the brightness of the bulb? It's going to be dimmer if we add extra battery. It will, it will be brighter. So if we talk about brightness of the bulbs, and there are some problems like that. It's all about power. More power, brighter bulb. Less power, dimmer bulb. No power at all. It's just dark. And we will have some examples like that. So this is things which kind of handy to remember, put in different memory cells. Yeah. We, we know everything from this slide, but uh, we should just practice using this knowledge to solve different problems. Battery has no resistance, provides fixed amount of voltage, which is called EMF, which is work done the by the battery to move one coulomb. And <coughs> wire has no resistance, so a wire doesn't change potential. And if a resistor has no current, which means it's not connected to anything, if we try to measure potential difference, it should be zero. It doesn't change potential. Potential only changes when A, electric current is not zero, and B, the resistance is not zero. When uh, charges travel through a passive element, in that case, potential changes. And if we want to calculate power or amount of work, we know what to do. Question. I want to do this. What we have here is a battery. Passive elemental resistor, a switch. Can I measure voltage or current when the switch is open? What do you think? If the switch is open, can I measure things? No. What do you think? Can I measure if the switch is open? I'm going to risk again. Can I measure voltage? You say no. Uh, and why can't I measure voltage when the switch is open? Oh, shit. Is it forbidden? Is it on? Do we have wires? Do we have hands? 
So what would stop me from measuring? I just need to complete the circuit. So if I ask again, can I measure voltage when the switch is open? What should be the answer? Yes, it's up to me. I wish I, I would be paid for that more than I am. Well, the switch is open. If we close the switch, there's a current, it's on, open, nothing. So how should I measure voltage across the switch if I connect these wires like this? Not sure if you see. What does it say? Six volts. Six volts. But did I measure voltage across the switch? No. So how should I measure voltage across the switch? I should connect these two leads, wires, probes across the switch. Now, <clears throat> let's see what you said. If you said zero, please raise your hand. Don't be scared. Two. Yeah, why would it be two? Six. Twelve. If you didn't say anything, you should say something right now. <clears throat> well, the answer is work. You have to command it. <coughs> uh, in, the, in, in this rule, it's that, that says a wire doesn't change potential. So right here, this, well, we always can set this to zero. It doesn't change a thing. So electric potential here is zero, 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 zero. Stop here. V equals zero. Well, V one. Electric potential here is 12, because it should be 12 higher than zero. That's what the battery does. This is uh, v, v minus, V plus should be equal to V minus plus EMF, which is zero plus 12, 12. Now 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. Up to here it's 12, no doubt. What is happening? to the potential inside this resistor? That's the most important question. What do you think? If the question is, what is happening? We only have two answers. Nothing or something. That's just pure logic. If you say something, then you only have two options. Potential might increase or decrease. So, please, anyone, tell, tell me what you think. What is happening to the electric potential inside this resistor? What do you think? Yes. <clears throat> so, nothing or something? Nothing. That was another rule. When a resistor has no current, the Ohm's law says this resistor is not zero. R is not zero. But when the switch is open, electric current is zero. So this potential difference should be equal to uh, zero times R, which is zero. So electric potential does not change. Still 12 right here still 12, and after that, the wire, again, doesn't change potential, 12, 12, 12, 12. Electric potential here is 12. Potential difference between 0 and 12 is 12. Well, in my experiment, this battery is 6. I should change this slide. I should have changed it many years ago. <clears throat> I don't have battery 12 volt. So, but in my experiment, if I connect, I should read Six. 
Any questions on that? This method has a name tracing a potential. We trace a potential. This is the most general method. It can, uh, it can be applied to any situation. If we're familiar, confident with that method, we can solve any problem from now on to ahead. Yes? There is a simple way to see it. I want to measure voltage across this dim bulb. Oops. Too soon. And what do I see? Nothing. Because there is no electric current. This bulb doesn't, ch this resistor doesn't change potential. Only with electric current inside electric potential will change. So we will see difference. What's going to happen if I close the switch? See? It's not zero anymore. Because well, it's negative. We don't like negatives. We don't like fractions. We don't like square roots. We don't like many, many things. But we always know how to get rid of those. For example, if you see it's negative, just switch. It becomes positive. And now we, you can see the voltage across this bulb is not zero because this bulb has a resistance and electric current traveling through. And resistance times current is voltage. But what do you think I should see if I measure voltage across the closed switch right now? The switch is closed. The current is traveling through it. What do you expect to see? Zero. Because the switch has no resistance. It becomes a wire. So a current is not zero, but the resistance is zero. Current times zero, zero. Cool. Consider to switching the physics major. You're going to play with this every day. Well, <clears throat> 12, as we know, 0. And uh, question. Anyone want? All right. Question. What do you think about this situation? This is the question number five. What we have here is a battery and uh, two bulbs connected to it. And uh, they have different resistances. This is, uh, let's say, 7 ohms. And this is right now 100 ohms. So what did you say? The gentleman in the third row, one, two, three, four, fifth chair from right. All right, I'm going to wait until you say something. We're all going to wait. You should pick one. You see, I'm putting the pressure on you. How good are you under pressure? Five. Let's see what everybody says. Most people says, uh, what question is it? So we have a, uh, <laughs> that can't be right. <clears throat> that can't be right. Okay, 
a wide distribution is a sign of uh, thinking and uh, well um, how does how do we call this particular connection how serious yesterday we had a rule about connection in series. What did we say yesterday? So why did you say it differently today? Okay, you didn't. <coughs> well, so this is not a new question. This is a review. The two elements could have been three or more connected one after another, that's what we call in series. So they must have the same current. It doesn't depend on the resistance. The question is why? So again, uh, there is a model which helps us to remember this fact. <laughs> Electric current is not just the number of electrons traveling through. It's a number of electrons traveling per a second and the number of electrons inside a specific device per meter or per cubic meter, per cubic centimeter, might be different. Electrons might be packed up denser or less denser, but also they might move slower and faster. And <clears throat> so if you look at this picture here, we have very dense electrons packed up. You see, spacing is short, but they travel faster. Here, we have less dense electrons, but they travel slower. But electric current is the number of electrons traveling per second. So here and there, electric current will be the same, twice of that. So when electrons travel through, they balance density and speed in such a way. So this product, which is current, remains the same. They might slow down. But in that case, we have more electrons per cubic meter. They might travel faster, but in that case, the density is lower. So they balance it up or all the time because electrons are very smart. <coughs> so, and when they travel through all devices connected in series, not number of electrons, but number of electrons per second, which is electric current, remains constant. Now, tracing the potential. <coughs> From now on, we're just going to solve more and more different problems, answer more and more different questions. Nothing really new left to learn. Uh, <coughs> this is an, an example of a simple circuit. It has one battery and two resistors. And uh, the first thing to do is to redraw the circuit. Just draw the circuit, uh, a battery, first resistor, second resistor, I missed it, all right. A battery, the first resistor, the second resistor. All right. Is it a different circuit or the same circuit? The same. It doesn't matter how we <coughs> draw the wires because it doesn't matter in the real space how all these elements related to each other, battery, battery, bulb, bulb, uh, okay, we can turn it on. If I move everything like that, it's going to be the same circuit or different? Same. same. If instead of a short wire, I'm going to use a very, very long wire here. 
and I'm gonna do it like this. Is it a different circuit? The same. So it doesn't matter how it looks like. What matters is how we connect them. And uh, here, what we have is unknown EMF, I suppose. Yeah, we know what we know electric current. I is equal to 0.1 amp. We know the resistor number one has the resistance of 10 ohms. And number two has a resistance of 20 ohms. That's what we know. And uh, this picture actually shows a model of what's happening to electric potential. Yeah. So let's say we have that fictional positive charge, not an electron. How do I know? Electrons are blue. So electrons would travel away from a negative terminal, but the battery kind of picks up the positive charge and brings it over here, and then they start traveling away from plus. That's it. Electric current. Electric current I travels through all elements, and as we just said, it has to be the same inside each element, inside the battery, inside the first resistor, inside the second resistor. What is happening to electric potential? Well, first of all, we can always choose any point we want and ground it. So we make this potential to be equal to zero, which means this potential should be equal to, we call it a plus, should be equal to the negative plus EMF that's what battery does. It brings the potential higher by its own EMF. So that's zero plus EMF, EMF. Still doesn't help, still unknown. Well, but we know what is happening to the potential. We know how to trace it. EMF, 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 EMF. Right here, it's still supposed to be the same unknown EMF. Now, we should ask a question. What should happen to the electric potential inside the resistor? We have only two possible answers. Nothing or something. What do you think? Nothing or something. Something. It drops. This is where we use the Ohm's law. The Ohm's law says if you have electric current traveling through a passive element, the potential difference between the ends of this element should be equal to this product. And electric current always through the passive el through the passive element always travels from a higher potential to a lower potential so we can we can call it v right v not right in that case v, v right should be higher greater than v not right so potential drops in the direction of electric current electric potential drops this electric potential right here Electric potential should be should be equal to what? Well, we can write the law. Ohm's law says potential difference. Well, actually, let's call it I don't know middle, because this point is in the middle between two resistors, and you can call it anything you like. Could have been between. So this potential difference should be equal to electric current times the resistance, which actually is a number. Uh, electric current equals 0.1, and uh, 
the resistance of this resistor x is equal to 10, 1 volt. Well, uh, middle, middle. Still doesn't help. So, moving on. This, uh, this potential doesn't change and along a wire. Now, so here we still have exactly the same potential. Now, inside this resistor, what happens to the potential? Nothing or something? Something. Exactly. We know electric current is not zero. Resistance is not zero. Electric potential must change. How? Electric potential always drops, decreases in the direction of electric current. To which value? To this value. And this value is zero. So, we can apply the Ohm's law for the second resistor. This difference should be equal to electric current times, uh, is that what I have noticed? That's supposed to be lowercase r. So, that's supposed to be uh, 0.1 times 20, 2 volts. Well, now we know this number, and finally we can use this number where? Back to here. So, EMF minus 2 equals 1, EMF equals 2 plus 1, 3 volts. This may be not the most efficient way to solve it, most efficient way would be actually going in opposite direction. We would calculate this immediately, then that, done. But uh, this is a good illustration of what tracing means. We could have traced it backwards, of course. Doesn't really matter. Any questions? This problem is the root of all problems in the world. That's not a question. Let's just, uh, again, practice. So, one battery. For one battery, we always set negative uh, electrode to zero potential. Zero. Zero, 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 zero. This number tells us that potential should increase by two volts. So, potential here should be 0 plus 2, which is 2, and 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, still 2. This is the voltage across this resistor, which means this electric potential should be higher by 8. So, what it means is 2 plus 8, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. This potential should be higher than zero by 12. Zero volts, 12 volts, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. This is a very hard word. 12. So what's supposed to be the voltage across this resistor B equal to? Well, that is literally difference. 12 minus 10, 2. And uh, uh, actually, so high, low electric current. Uh, we know a rule. Electric current through a resistor always travels from high to low. So this, that's supposed to be just some kind of a resistor, a bulb maybe. But in this situation, that's wrong. I'm just going to go to the answer. If we trace potentials in the same way we did, we get 14 and 12. The voltage still 2. However, uh, the direction is wrong now. Electric current still travels. Well, 
it's very important to be able to describe correctly in words what is happening to electric current. The question is where? Electric current through this resistor travels. Electric current through resistor travels. How do we call this direction? Up. Exactly. That's how we should say it. Electric current through this resistor travels. How? To the left. Now, electric current through this element travels down. Electric current through the battery travels to the right. And now we say electric current in the circuit is clockwise. And we need to be able to match those individual directions through each individual element and the direction inside the whole circuit. Because that's what people say. What is the direction in the circuit? Clockwise. What is the direction of electric current through this element? Down. But it also means, see this potential is 4, this potential 12. It also means <coughs> this electric current travels from low to high. That only can happen if this element is not a resistor, not passive, active. Which means this is supposed to be a battery. This circuit has two batteries. Mm, well, this is a very straightforward example. What do you see here? How do we call this series? We said that word. We immediately write the equation. R equivalent is equal to R1 plus R2, 6 plus 3, 9 ohms. So the equivalent circuit should have the same battery but a single resistor with the resistance of 9 ohms. And for this circuit, we know how to calculate electric current. We just have to apply this ohms load. Yeah? We know 0, 0, 0, 0, 12, 12, 12, 12. If we have only one passive element, only one active element, the voltage across the passive element always will be equal to the EMF. Electric current always equals this over that. So 12 over 9, 4 thirds amps. But <clears throat> now we can go back to the original circuit. We know that the same electric current should travel here. So if I want to calculate the voltage across the first resistor, I can apply the Ohm's law again. It should be equal to current times the resistance of the first resistor, 4 thirds times 6, 8. Oops, what happened? I know what is happening. It punishes me. My force are not perfect. It's Wednesday. It's supposed to be perfect. Eight volts. Now we have a choice. If we want to calculate this voltage, we actually have two different ways to do that. First of all, we know that if we have two elements in series, this voltage plus this voltage should be 12. So. 8 plus something is 12. That some things equals 12 minus 8, 4. Or we could have used, again, the Ohm's law. So delta V2 on one hand, EMF minus delta V1. On another hand, supposed to be equal to same current times R2. 4 thirds times 3, 4. Power. All right. We can calculate the power dissipated into the first resistor. We can calculate the power in the second or total. P1 equals I1 delta V1. 
4 over 3 times 8 watts. P2 equals, uh, sorry, I don't, well, okay, that's actually a good thing. I2 delta V2, but current is the same, only voltage is different. How can we calculate total energy? Well, total power, P1 plus P2, of course. However, where does that energy come from, from the battery? So that also should be equal to EMF times current. Again, we have more uh, equations we, should, we could use. And this is just 12 times uh, current, 4 divided by 3 which is consistent with this. If we add 4 thirds times 8 and 4 thirds times 4, it's 4 thirds times 12. <sighs> All right, same situation. Uh, the only difference is sometimes we have to solve a problem uh, when instead of a battery, we use maybe a power outlet or a generator. So electric current might change in time. We don't care. There is always a value which, not average, average square, doesn't matter. It has a name, root mean square. And again, doesn't matter what it means, it's just RMF. So as long as we know this value for a changing voltage, a changing current, 6 volts, we can apply all equations which we were using for direct current for DC, nothing changes. So here the circuit has a battery, kind of, yeah in quotes, 6 volts, and two resistors, one, two, R1, R2, and of course, the first intention is to replace these two resistors with a single one, R equivalent, and of course, we can, we, we, we know what to do, we just have to apply a rule for resistors connected in parallel, and uh, that is 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8, which is 3 over 8. What do we do now? Flip it. So our equivalent is 8 over 3 ohms. 6 volts. So as long as as we get the simple circuit, one active element, one passive element, that's it. We can start applying the Ohm's law immediately, directly, the fastest way to do it. So electric current here, electric, uh, actually, this is my plus, this is my minus. So electric current in this circuit travels counterclockwise. Electric current through my element travels to the right. Electric current through the battery travels to the left, and the electric current will be equal to this voltage, which is equal to EMF, which is equal to root mean square, RMS, which is equal to 6, divided by the equivalent resistance. So 6 times 3 over 8. Uh, 9 over 4, 2.125, yeah. But now we, we, can go, we, we can go back to the original circuit. What's happening here? Electric current travels and splits. The junction rule says I1 plus I2 supposed to be equal to I, which is 9 over 4. However, now we don't have to use it. 
we could have do it uh, at, uh, in the first place. What do we know about the voltage across each resistor? Same. So I1 supposed to be equal to delta V1 over R1, but delta V1 is just EMF. So 6 over 8. I2. We can calculate I2 by subtracting or we, by applying the Ohm's law. 6 over 4. Of course, these are very simple examples. But tomorrow we're going to do more more complicated examples. The strategy, the way of thinking, doesn't depend on how many elements are in a circuit. All right. Uh, the energy. Now, don't answer this question. We have five. That's enough. Just tell me what you think. You are at home. You have many different uh, devices. For example, here I have two very simple devices. I have to plug it into power outlet. OK, it's on. I have to plug this one. <laughs> People get Oscars for something like that, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, <clears throat> that one is plugged in here. This one is plugged in there. What kind of a wiring? What kind of a connection? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Parallel. Parallel. They all out all outlets, they all go to the same power line eventually. They're all connected in parallel to each other. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> in parallel. And uh, uh, this is how you pay your electric bill. Each device consumes some power. And uh, if you use it for an hour, 10 hours, you just calculate total amount of work that device does. For the first device, power times times, you used it over a month, second. You calculate the total energy spent, and you multiply by how much you pay for. And this is what people get confused about. This is a practical unit, not physical. Kilowatt hour. That's how it's measured. We pay for a kilowatt hour. But kilo means 1,000. Watt means what? Hour means 3,600 seconds. So this is just the amount of joules. For this amount of joules, we pay, well, it depends on your provider, four cents, six cents. <clears throat> and that's how they calculate your bill. <clears throat> this is how they will connect it eventually to the same line. And uh, again, this is not a question. You just saw two bulbs. One was bright, second was dim. Of course, the brighter consumes more power, the dimmer consumes less power, and actually it emits more power or less power. So the dim one was 40 watt bulb, the bright one was 100 watt bulb. But <clears throat> only because they connected in parallel, and my last, again, that's not the question, last thing I want to show you is this.
40, 100. So I'm going to switch to a camera soon. <coughs> This is very important to understand that changing the type of wiring changes things. Right now, here, these two bulbs connected in parallel to each other. Of course, I need a wire to connect them to a power supply. Mm -hmm. Plug it in and turn the switch on. Well, you can see this is brighter, this is dimmer. 140. Now, I want to rewire the circuit. I want to connect the same bulbs in series. What do you think should happen? In series means like this. And I need to connect my leads like this now. Plug it in. Completely opposite. The 100 watt bulb is practically doesn't do anything, but the 41 bulb now is brighter. What is the explanation? The explanation is in calculating the power. If we calculate the power, more power means brighter, less power means dimmer. And all we have to do is it's alive. All we have to do is just calculate power twice. First time when we have well R R one R two bulbs connected in parallel second times the same bulbs R one. R2 connected in series. <coughs> power 1 will be equal to delta V squared over R1. Power 2 will be equal to delta V squared over R2. Here, power 1 will be equal to current times, current times R1, and power power 2 equals current times R2. But the thing is, the current here and the current there are not the same. Not the same. So parallel, serious, serious, serious. And uh, And that's it, what I'm going to say about it today. So I'm going to pick up from this tomorrow. That's my alarm. Again, from the point of view of theory, you know everything. And we are not going to learn anything new tomorrow. Just more examples, more examples, more examples. Good morning. <coughs>